in the moment of resurrection, when Christ's body was revivified, the shroud that was resting on the corpse with the resurrected glory no longer bound by the laws of physics, that the cloth sank through his resurrected body. The reason we are so fascinated by the possibility, and I think real possibility, that this is the burial cloth of Christ, you've probably seen news reports that there's been a new study on the Shroud of Turin that seems to indicate this cloth may go back to the time of Christ. Uh, lots of news outlets are speaking on it. I grabbed this off The Independent and it says this, in case you haven't seen it for yourself. Italian scientists say they have found evidence that the Shroud of Turin may indeed have been Jesus Christ's burial cloth, countering controversial previous research dating the artifact to medieval times. The new study, using x-rays to inspect linen threads from the shroud, traces its origin all the way back to the time of Jesus, claiming previous analysis might have been flawed due to contamination. Now, I am anything but an expert on the shroud and these dating techniques, so I am not here to <laughs> debate any of that. I'll leave that to the scientists. Uh, I do want to share, though, some commentary on why I think the shroud is so fascinating to people and why, in particular, it draws our attention. If you want to learn more about the shroud from an expert on the shroud, I'd highly recommend Matt Frad's conversation with Father Andrew Dalton, and we have the link in the description below if you want to check that out. I think it's one of Matt Frad's uh, most viewed uh, podcast episodes of all time on Pints with Aquinas. That itself shows the level of fascination that people have with the Shroud. My experience with the Shroud takes me back, oh, maybe 15 years or more when I went to the Shroud of Turin Center in Colorado Springs. And this is run by a Dr. Jackson. He's a physicist who had access to the shroud, like studied the shroud itself, uh, and had extensive studies done on the shroud. I went to first the public presentation that he gives on a regular basis at his center, but I stayed afterwards and had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Dr. Jackson because of my interest in the theology of the body and how the shroud, if indeed it is the burial cloth of Jesus, puts us just one step removed, if you will, from touching his body, right? And I believe this is the source of fascination with the shroud. It is evidence of this crucified man, Jesus Christ. If indeed it is his burial cloth, it gets us in touch with the mystery of his death and his resurrection. Now, how so his resurrection? I mean, obviously, the shroud, uh, if it is the burial cloth of Christ, the blood stains, the marks of the nails in the wrists, the scourge marks, the crown of thorns, the lance, all of this lines up really precisely with the gospel accounts of the crucifixion of Christ. So it's obviously evidence of a crucified man and possibly Jesus Christ himself. But how is the shroud evidence of the resurrection? This brings me to one of the most memorable things that Dr. Jackson taught us when we were visiting at his center. He said, the imprint of this crucified man is decisively not paint. And he believes that at the moment of the resurrection, there was this radiation that came from the power that infused Christ's body, bringing about the resurrection, and that the image comes from, this is his theory, uh, he would explain it far better than I. This is from memory 15 years ago, but it left an impression. He said, you know how Christ in his resurrected glory, he could walk through walls, right? His body was no longer bound by the, the laws of physics. 
And he believes that in the moment of resurrection, when Christ's body was revivified, the shroud that was resting on the corpse with the resurrected glory no longer bound by the laws of physics, that the cloth sank through his resurrected body, that Christ just came out of that cloth like he would walk through a wall of the upper room, and that the power, the radiation of that glorified body, and we got to hold this together, it's, he's not a ghost. Remember what Jesus says in the upper room? The disciples, of course, they, they thought they saw a ghost, and Jesus says, I'm not a ghost. A ghost does not have flesh and bones like I do. You don't believe me? Give me a piece of fish and I'll eat it. No, this is a true physical body, but it's entered into a new dimension, a glorified body, a perfectly spiritualized body. Uh, that does not mean an evaporated body. That does not mean a non-corporeal reality. It means that the corporeal reality, the physical bones and flesh, are now perfectly, and here I quote St. John Paul II, perfectly permeated and penetrated by the divine spirit. Uh, this, this is beyond our sense experience, right? And we also have to recognize, you know, when people saw the resurrected Christ, there was something different. Uh, the disciples on the road to Emmaus didn't even recognize him. There's something other about this risen bodily reality. So this was Dr. Jackson's theory that the cloth just went through his flesh and that glorified, radiated body imprinted the image on the shroud. Fascinating. Be sure to check out the website for the Shroud of Turin Center in Colorado Springs. We'll have the link in the uh, description below. But I want to close with this. I think the reason we are so fascinated by the possibility, and I think real possibility, that this is the burial cloth of Christ, is it gets us literally in touch. There is something tangible in the here and now that is possible to touch, to, to feel, to see, and that this thing that we can see on display in Turin, the possibility that that wrapped the body of the logos, the word made flesh, that the blood stains on that cloth are the stains of blood from the crucified and risen Jesus Christ, the shroud brings the mystery of the incarnation just a little bit closer to us, and it forces us to grapple with the idea of a God that is not just some idealized, abstract concept up in the heavens, but it forces us to grapple with the idea of a God who took flesh, a God who had fingernails, a God who had the capacity to bleed, a God that loves us not just in some abstract spiritual way, but a God who literally bleeds to love us. And even more astonishingly, says, drink my blood if you want to have life in you. Uh, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? His own disciples said the same 2,000 years ago. But what an astounding proposal to entertain that God is not just some wispy thing, some abstract theological idea but that theology is incarnate, theology of the body. Uh, if the incarnation is real, what does that say about our own bodies? Our own bodies have the capacity for eternal life. 
It's not just a reality of the soul. Eternal life is the destiny of our bodies. And grappling with that, I think, is at the root of our fascination with the shroud. Anyway, check out the links below. Make sure you watch that longer video from Matt Frad if you really want to get an in-depth understanding of the shroud from a Catholic perspective. Maybe it really is the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. What do you think? Leave your comments below. Let's enter into a good discussion.